Hello and welcome to the main cave. Now in this video, I'm going to be going through an absolute gem of a mouse that I found and I bought it and as I'm sure some of you will have heard of it, but I'm guessing many of you won't. So it's this, the Atlantis from Lamzu. If you've never heard of them before, you're not alone as this company seems to have come out of nowhere with an absolutely banging mouse. They aren't a household name yet, but if they do keep producing kit like this, then you'll be hearing loads about them. They reside in Shenzhou, and this is a particular mouse can be bought from different websites here in the UK, but I couldn't find it on Amazon, and I've left links down below of where I bought it from. So there is also a newer mini version, which I may get at some point, but for this video, we are focusing on the OG version. In this video, I'm going to be going through the unboxing, the price, the build quality, the buttons, specification, features, software, shape and comfort, and finally, what I didn't like about this mouse after months of use. But firstly, a quick disclaimer. So let's start off with the unboxing then. I'd usually rattle through this, but in this case, it actually deserves a bit of time appreciating how good it is. It was shrink wrapped and after taking that off, you're greeted with a book opening style box. The presentation on show here is usually reserved for mice of much higher value. You open it up and one side of the mouse itself and the other is the accessories of which there's loads. For starters, a pack of extra skates is included, along with some grip tape. However, my grip tape was red, and pretty sure it might have meant to come in with a, like a bluey, greeny colour, as that's what I've seen in other places, but I could be wrong. Either way, red doesn't really suit the white and blue mouse, so I may chip in and get some others to match it at some point. I have this in polar white, but it also does come in other cool colours such as black, miami blue, pink and green. But also in the box, there is a velvety feeling carry bag with the Lamzu logo on the front so you don't forget who made it. And inside comes a very good quality on point color branded USB-C cable, which I'll talk about more later. Also a very limited manual, a female USB-A to USB-C adapter, and finally the wireless dongle. This mouse cost me 90 British pounds, so it wasn't very cheap, yet it comes with accessories which some mice that are twice as expensive don't come with. Overall for the price, I'm very satisfied with what I got and the quality of it all, despite the grip tape being a different color to what I'd expect. So when you get out of the box, it's hard not to be impressed as the build quality for such a light mouse is superb. We'll talk more about the spec later, but one major selling point is that this mouse only weighs in at 55 grams, and they want you to know about it. It's printed on the outside of the box four times, several more times inside the box, and I lost count how many times it's on the website. So with it being lighter, I did feel for the build quality a bit, but wow was I wrong. Going over the entire mouse, there's no creaking or straining, and the OV even slightest of movement is the very sides at the bottom. But really, who cares? I know I don't really. It hardly moves and it needs a lot of force just to get it moving. If you plan on shaking this thing, fear not, nothing moves or nothing rattles. And on the other side is like a translucent piece, which in the case of the color of the polar white that I went for is like a bluey green color. It's peppered with specific cutouts, which again made me think that there might have been some flex issues, but no, there's none. Even all the thinnest of pieces seem to hold up under the stress and feel very tight and rigid. The outer shell feels smooth, but I was able to get good enough grip on it when playing fast competitive games. The skates provided out of the box are great. Sliding around, I had no issue at all. The only problem I did encounter is the USB-C port at the front. It almost encased deep in plastic. So if you want to use any other third party USB-C cable, then it needs to fit inside of this. My desk one just fitted, but I can imagine some people may have some problems. Still, small things, but worth noting. While we're here, we'll have a look at the included cable. It's very nice. It's a great color, well braided, and the edge is slightly angled upward so as not to have quite that much when exiting the mouse. It's well terminated and comes in at 1.8 meters long. The only way to charge this Atlantis is to use that USB port at the front. This mouse has five buttons and the scroll wheel, something you can pretty much expect as a minimum on most gaming mice that sold today. The two main clicks sound like this. So through my testing, the buttons feel nice and responsive, a small amount of post and pre-travel, nothing that will hamper your playing though. They use the Huano blue switches, which are incredible, and overall felt great. The two side buttons are nice and snappy, but there is something odd with one of them. 
The front button seems to click and then be able to post travel further and almost flush with the body. But this isn't the case with the rear of the buttons. It clicks and it stops no matter how much I push it in. As I said, it's a bit odd, but not really a problem when using. The scroll wheel is plastic with a thick rubber coating and has a nice deep grip texture to it and the click is enough pressure it not to be accidentally pressed. So onto the spec here and from the website is a list of all the major features. Main points to note here are the weight, as we said, only 55 grams. The sensor uses the Pixar 3395, TTC Gold encoder wheel, max DPI of 26,000, two connections, USB and a 2.4G dongle, battery life of a reported 70 hours. Now I've been using this mouse for a few weeks and the 70 hours, it feels about right. I've hardly had to charge it and when I do, it doesn't take long to get it up to full speed. So features now, and there isn't much in the way of extras to this mouse, but on the bottom of the mouse, there is a button which you use to change the DPI. The light next to it indicates which DPI you are currently on, which can be set in the software, which I'll talk about in a bit. So a quick press and the DPI scales to the next one. However, there's no visual indication of what DPI you are actually on. So if you, for example, have three set, 100, 1000 and 10,000, and you are on 1000, and you want to check what DPI you are on, press the button and it selects the next DPI. So you'd instantly be going on to 10,000 DPI. Therefore, if you wanted to go back to 1,000, you have to scroll through all of your DPIs till you are back to the one you were on. I'd like to have seen a press of the button just to show what DPI you're on. Then a second press starts to scroll through your DPI selections. Hey, another small problem. On the top is the only other LED and that is the battery indicator. If it's low, it will light up red and it flashes purple when charging. Next up is software. Now this isn't essential, but it has some really nice features that you can play with. So go onto the website, download the software called the Atlantis Driver and get it installed. It's only available for Windows and at the time of recording, I couldn't find a Mac version. So open it up and you're greeted with a basic layout and for the first screen, you can change your profile and have five set. These can be toggled on the mouse, but you will need to assign one of the buttons to do that. So now to change the buttons. So pick one and change it to a list of alternatives, including DPI switch, multimedia functions, macros, etc. Pretty much anything that you'd need. Down the bottom of this screen is debounce. Out of the box, it's set to 12 milliseconds. So change that to your own preference, ranging from 0 to 30 milliseconds. The next screen is where you can change the DPI profiles. You can have up to five set, all color coded for that button on the bottom that we talked about earlier. The DPI slider goes up in increments of 50 from 50 to 26,000. On the right is the polling rate that you really should be set to 1,000. At the bottom is the LOD and could be either one millimeter or two millimeters. Then finally on this screen is the ripple control and the angle snapping. The final screen of the software is macros. Here you can go mad adding macros and assigning them all to the buttons. Plenty of customization to be had here if that's what you want. All in all, a very nice piece of software. It doesn't have the look or the sheen of the big names, but does it need it? It does everything that you'd need and more. Now next up is the shape and the comfort. Now it measures nearly seven centimeters at the back, going down to around about six centimeters at the front. It's four centimeters high under the palm, sloping down to the front of the mouse, which hits at 1.5 centimeters. And it's around 12.5 centimeters long. And the closest mouse that I have into a shape of the body is the Glorious O. It's thin at the front and then bulges towards the back. Comfort is 100% subjective, but for me, the fingertip grip, I found it excellent. The flared back was enough to sit nicely under my palm and give me enough support. The website claims it's good for claw grip, and this is due to the long downturn of the clicks. They aggressively slope from the uniform bulge at the back. The actual buttons are very slightly curved on the outside, far less than the Glorious O and the Pulsar X2. And when pressing your fingers, don't get moved into a position. I found it comfortable enough to click across the entire width, but personally, I'd like to have seen a little bit more undulation just to rest my fingers when not clicking. But again, that's just a personal preference. Overall, I don't think you'd have any serious issues with the comfort, no matter your grip preference. This is a brilliant shaped mouse. I've used this mouse for hours at a time and comfort was spot on. I didn't ever feel tired and it was a joy to use. It felt responsive at all times and the combination of shell, clicks, skates, software, sensors made for a very enjoyable experience. It's almost like they've taken the best bits from other mice and put them into this package. So what don't I like about this mouse? Well, apart from what I said about the DPI selection and the USB-C housing, 
There isn't really much I don't like. It does a lot and it does a lot very well. So would I recommend this mouse to you? Yes, I would. For £90 or $90, it's definitely a solid purchase. So let me know then, have you got one of these? How are you getting on with it? Or did you go for the mini instead? Do let me know down in the comments below. I hope you like the video. Till the next one. Bye-bye.